if you came of age after the year 1993, it's quite possible that much of what you know about dinosaurs you learned from the film Jurassic Park. When it comes to the reptilian creatures that once roamed the Earth, it can be hard to separate fact from fantasy. One man, though, who could help us do just that is paleontologist Steve Brusati. Uh, his book, The Rise and Fall of the Dinosaurs, came out in 2018, and it's just been released uh, in French, which is why we are lucky enough, uh, as you saw him, to have him here in Paris with us to talk about it. Steve, it is such a pleasure to have you. We've been excited talking about dinosaurs all morning in the newsroom. Uh, can you just start by telling us how you became interested in dinosaurs? Yeah, well, thanks for having me on. This is very exciting for me to have my book translated into French. And when I took French class in high school, and I'd learned very little, but years ago, I could have never imagined. So um, it was around that time, actually, when I was in high school, when I was a teenager, that I became obsessed with dinosaurs. Through my youngest brother, who was a real dinosaur fanatic, and it, it, it was Jurassic Park in large part, seeing that film that really uh, made him enthralled with dinosaurs. And that eventually then made me enthralled with dinosaurs. And I went on to make this career traveling around the world, working with amazing people, digging up dinosaur bones. And given your age, I had a feeling you were part of Generation Jurassic mm -hmm. Park. Uh, you are actually going to be the scientific advisor for the next installment of the Jurassic World oh. films in 2022. Uh, I know you can't give away anything <laughs> about the movie, but can you just tell us what's the craziest thing that you've seen Hollywood try to do with dinosaurs? Well, it, it's a real uh, honor to be part of this film. That's another thing I never would have thought growing up that I'd be part of this franchise. And the, the film will come out next summer. Uh, I'll say the craziest thing was meeting Omar Sy on the set, <laughs> uh, which was remarkable. But uh, Hollywood has a depiction of dinosaurs. I'm not going to criticize Jurassic Park. But what I will say is there is still this image of dinosaurs in pop culture and on film that uh, dinosaurs are these overgrown, dim-witted, scale-covered, green, gray monsters. That's not what dinosaurs were really like. In fact, many dinosaurs were covered in feathers. The real Velociraptor not only had feathers, but had wings on its arms. So dinosaurs were much more like birds than they were like reptiles. And we're really just starting to understand this. Yeah, they do mention, there's that famous scene in Jurassic Park where they sort of mention that. How did we learn the bird connection? It's an idea that goes all the way back to the time of Charles Darwin. So it's an old idea. It's not something crazy and new from my generation of paleontologists, but it was only in the mid to late 90s that the first actual fossils of dinosaur skeletons covered in feathers were discovered, and they were found in China. And this was after Jurassic Park came out. So Steven Spielberg in Jurassic Park, he had no idea dinosaurs were covered in feathers. He just missed that. But we now have thousands of fossils from China of all kinds of dinosaurs with feathers, with wings. We can even sometimes tell the colors of those dinosaur feathers. And literally every week we are finding new species of dinosaurs somewhere around the world. So it, it is an amazing time right now. And there are many young paleontologists, especially all over the globe, including right here in France. Right now in France, some of my colleagues are actually down south digging up dinosaur bones. So this is happening everywhere as we speak. And I wanted to ask you, because we find dinosaurs all over the world, China, France, the United States. Were those all the same types of dinosaurs or did different continents tend to see different types? Dinosaurs live for a long time. I mean, humans, <laughs> our species have been around a few hundred thousand years. Dinosaurs were around for over 150 million years. And when dinosaurs first started out, there was only one continent. This was the time of Pangaea, the supercontinent. But then over time, that giant continent broke apart and dinosaurs were along for the ride. So the dinosaurs evolved and diversified as the land split up. So by the end of the time of dinosaurs, the world looked pretty similar to what it does today. And you had different dinosaurs living in different places. You had T. rexes in North America. You had dwarf dinosaurs living on islands and what is now France and other parts of Europe. So different dinosaurs in different places, many, many thousands of species all over the world. 
Now, another thing that's coming up here in Paris that you might have heard about is this fossilized skeleton of a triceratops, mm -hmm. the biggest one they ever found. It's called Big John. It's going to be auctioned off this month. And I wanted to ask you mm -hmm. what you think about that idea of auctioning off dinosaur bones. <laughs> well, you got me on the spot on live TV, so I have to choose my words <laughs> carefully. Uh, you know, what I will say is that fossils uh, like dinosaur skeletons, uh, you know, this is irreplaceable natural heritage. So. Fossils like these, really nice skeletons like that, they need to be in museums where everybody can see them, where children can see them, become inspired by them, where scientists can, can study them. And so uh, as a professional scientist, I want the best fossils to be in museums. That's how I was inspired as a teenager, going to the Field Museum in Chicago, seeing those dinosaur skeletons. Yeah. An important message definitely for the future <laughs> buyer uh of that fossil. Uh, you've also been on digs all over the world. Can you tell us what some of your most memorable discoveries were? I've been very fortunate uh, over the last 15 years or so to be part of this community, global community of paleontologists. And I have colleagues all over the world. I have great friends here in France who I've worked with. Uh, the, the first big expedition I ever went on when I, I was at a university in Chicago, and I went to Tibet with my mentor and Didier Dutai, who's a great French paleontologist, was part of that team. Uh, we didn't find many bones there, but just being in, in the Himalayas was, was amazing. Uh, but from that point on, I, I've, I've gotten to work with some great people and I've looked for dinosaurs in, uh, in Brazil and in China and across Europe and, and back home in the US. And it's hard to pick out you know, one or two stories. Um, but there's, there's special moments in all of those places. And sometimes it's not even dinosaurs. We're finding other fossils. But one of my favorites is that it, working in Poland, maybe this is a place that you might not think of when you think of digging up dinosaurs. But you can find fossils in Poland. Uh, and we found footprints, these tiny, tiny little things, just about the size of a, a cat's paw print of the very, very oldest dinosaur ancestors. So this is this whisper of what was to come. These were small animals, humble animals. You look at those footprints, you would never guess that these things would evolve into T-Rexes and Brontosauruses. And in your book, you do say that there are thousands of dinosaur species still alive today. What do you mean by that? Are you talking about birds? <laughs> I'm talking about birds. So that's one of the things in, in the book, uh, in the Rise and Fall of the Dinosaurs, that I wanted to convey is that dinosaurs really are still with us. And we think of dinosaurs, we think of T-Rex and Brontosaurus and Triceratops, and we think of them as these extinct beasts. And those dinosaurs are extinct. Most dinosaurs are extinct because this 10 kilometer wide asteroid fell out of the sky 66 million years ago and destroyed the earth and changed everything forever. And most dinosaurs could not cope with that. But one type of dinosaur did survive, and those are the birds. And then from there, birds diversified and there are over 10,000 species alive today. So birds are dinosaurs, the same way bats are a type of mammal. Same thing, They're just birds are just a strange type of small dinosaur that has wings, they can fly. So they are still with us, uh, and we should appreciate them. We should appreciate that we still have dinosaurs in the same world as us today. And can you tell us about some of the mysteries that we still don't know about dinosaurs? Maybe some of the stuff that you're working on now? There is a lot we still don't know. So in a book like this, you know, I, I tell the story of dinosaur evolution, where they came from, how they started small, they rose up, they became dominant. Some of them became literally bigger than Boeing 737 airplanes. It's inconceivable, but it's true. Uh, and then how the rest of them went extinct except for birds. You know, I tell that story. It's a nice, clean story. But there are still gaps in that story. There are still big mysteries that we don't know. The biggest one of all is that about 200 million years ago, that supercontinent that the dinosaurs grew up on, Pangaea, started to break apart. And as it did so, there were these enormous volcanic eruptions. And that led to climate change. It led to global warming. It caused an extinction. And the dinosaurs were the great survivors of that extinction. But a lot of their competitors, which were mostly crocodiles and amphibians, died out. And we don't know why. What was it that made the dinosaurs so special that they could endure that moment of global catastrophic climate change? I, 
I don't know the answer. So somebody in the new generation of paleontologists, somebody who is a student right now, I'm sure is going to figure this out. To me, that is the biggest remaining mystery about the age of dinosaurs. But there's many others. There is still a lot that we have to learn. I do hope I'm alive to see the end of that mystery. Steve, one final question for you, just very quickly. Do you have a favorite dinosaur? Of course I do. <laughs> um, and it's going to be very cliched, uh, but it is T-Rex. And that goes back to watching Jurassic Park, seeing that it, just this, you know, bus size, 13 meter long, seven ton killing machine eating that lawyer. <laughs> so my father's a lawyer. So I find that very funny <laughs> from that early age. And so I love T-Rex and I've studied T-Rex and I don't think it gets any better. Yeah, than a he, monster he is, like he that. is undeniably the king. <laughs> Steve Rossetti, thank you so much for joining us to tell us all about dinosaurs. Uh, I would love to go on for all morning, but we're going to have to move on. But thank you thank so you. much. <laughs>